ponder for a moment, what is nothing? A void, a vacuum, a blank space, these are common associations we have when we think of nothing. Yet as we delve deeper into the enigma of nothingness, it becomes increasingly paradoxical. How do we define something that ostensibly doesn't exist? And why does the concept of nothing carry such weight across different cultures, philosophies, and scientific theories? Throughout history, civilizations have often grappled with the concept of nothingness, each interpreting it in unique ways. Ancient Egyptians, for instance, perceived it as a state of chaos from which the world emerged. For them, nothing was the primordial waters of Nun, a vast, unformed realm from which all life sprang. In stark contrast, the ancient Greeks saw nothing as a philosophical impossibility. The philosopher Parmenides famously proclaimed, what is cannot not be. In other words, something cannot come from nothing, and therefore nothing cannot exist. Fast forward to the Eastern philosophies, where nothingness takes on a whole new meaning. In Buddhism, for instance, the concept of shunyata, or emptiness, is central to understanding the nature of reality. Here, nothingness isn't a void or absence, but rather a state of being free from attachments and illusions, a state of enlightenment. As we traverse through the epics and across continents, we encounter a fascinating range of interpretations, each adding another layer to this enigmatic concept. And yet, we find ourselves circling back to the central paradox, how can we define nothing? Perhaps the charm of nothingness lies in its very indefinability. It's an idea that challenges our understanding of existence and reality. It pushes us to question, to explore, to seek beyond what is apparent. It's a concept that, despite its apparent simplicity, is teeming with complexities and contradictions. So the next time you find yourself pondering over nothing, remember, it's not just an absence, a vacuum, or a void. It's an enigma, a paradox, a mystery that's as old as civilization itself. One might realize nothing is not as simple as it seems. Philosophers have long grappled with the concept of nothingness. Delving into the annals of philosophical thought, the concept of nothingness has been a subject of intense contemplation. This seemingly simple concept, when viewed through the lens of philosophy, reveals layers of complexity that have intrigued thinkers throughout history. When we think of Socrates, for instance, we find a philosopher who considered the notion of nothingness as a state of pure potential, a blank slate from which all things could emerge. To Socrates, nothingness was not an end, but rather a beginning, a void filled with the possibility of becoming something. Fast forward to the era of Friedrich Nietzsche, a philosopher who dared to stare into the abyss of nothingness. Nietzsche viewed nothingness not as a state of emptiness, but as a state of absence. His famous proclamation, God is dead, was not an assertion of atheism, but rather a commentary on the void left by the death of traditional values and beliefs. In this void, Nietzsche saw the potential for new values to arise, not from divine mandate, but from human creativity and will. Then we have Martin Heidegger, a 20th century philosopher whose exploration of nothingness took a different turn. Heidegger proposed that nothingness is not an absence, but rather an integral part of being. He argued that our understanding of existence is defined by its contrast to nothingness. We understand what it means to be because we understand what it means not to be. To Heidegger, nothingness was not a state to be feared or avoided, but instead a fundamental aspect of human existence. These philosophical perspectives on nothingness have taken us on a journey from viewing it as a state of potential to an absence, and then as an integral part of being. Each interpretation provides a unique lens through which we can examine the complex and enigmatic concept of nothingness. Indeed, the philosophical perspectives on nothingness are as diverse as they are profound. From the perspective of science, nothing is a different beast altogether. Let's delve into the world of physics and cosmology where the concept of nothingness takes on a whole new meaning. Here the notion of nothing is not synonymous with emptiness or the absence of anything. Quite the contrary, it's an arena bustling with activity. In the realm of quantum physics, our understanding of nothingness revolves around the concept of a vacuum. It's easy to think of a vacuum as an empty void, a space devoid of matter, energy, and everything else. But the quantum world is a place of strange phenomena, and it tells us that this is not the case. 
quantum mechanics posits that even in a vacuum there are minute fluctuations of energy leading to the creation and annihilation of particle-antiparticle pairs. These pairs, known as virtual particles, pop in and out of existence in infinitesimally small fractions of a second. So even the emptiest of spaces is teeming with these fleeting existences. This idea is supported by the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, a cornerstone of quantum mechanics, which states that we can never simultaneously know the exact position and momentum of a particle. This principle allows for the temporary violation of energy conservation, giving rise to these virtual particles. On a larger scale, cosmology introduces us to the notion of empty space. As an active participant in the universe's evolution, the accelerating expansion of the universe, as explained by dark energy theories, suggests that this empty space is filled with a form of energy that counteracts gravity and pushes galaxies apart. So, when we talk about nothing in a scientific context, we are referring to a state of constant fluctuation and activity. A state that is far from empty, it is a place where particles dance in and out of existence, where the fabric of space-time itself is dynamic, and where the hidden energy of the vacuum shapes the cosmos. So, nothing, in the scientific sense, is far from nothing. In the realm of psychology, nothingness has its own unique implications. When we dive into the human psyche, we find that nothingness is not just a philosophical or scientific concept. It's a deeply personal, emotional experience that can shape our thoughts, fears, and behaviors. Consider the fear of nothingness, also known as kenophobia. It's not just a fear of physical emptiness or void, but a dread of existential emptiness. It's the anxiety we feel when we ponder the meaninglessness or purposelessness of life. This fear can be so overwhelming that it motivates us to fill our lives with distractions, activities, and relationships just to avoid the discomfort of confronting this existential void. Now let's delve into existential psychology, a field that grapples directly with the concept of nothingness. It posits that the confrontation with nothingness is a fundamental part of the human condition. According to existential psychologists, we all have an inherent fear of nothingness that drives us to seek meaning and purpose in life. One of the key concepts in this field is the existential void. It's a state of emptiness and isolation, a sense of being adrift in a universe without clear meaning or purpose. This void can be a source of great distress, leading to feelings of loneliness, despair, and even existential anxiety. But existential psychologists also argue that this void can be a catalyst for personal growth. By confronting and embracing the void, we can come to terms with the inherent uncertainty of life, find our own individual meanings, and ultimately lead a more authentic and fulfilling life. So, in the realm of psychology, nothingness is far from being a mere absence. It's a profound, emotive concept that can instigate fear provoke deep questioning and even inspire personal transformation. In the human mind, nothing can often mean everything. So, is nothing real? This question may seem paradoxical at first glance, but as we've explored throughout this journey, it's far from simple. Let's quickly revisit our main theories. We've seen the philosophical perspectives where nothing is a concept, a state of non-being, or the absence of something. We've dived into the scientific understandings where nothing becomes a quantum vacuum replete with virtual particles and energy fluctuations. And we've navigated the psychological interpretations where nothing is a feeling, a state of mind, but at the heart of all these perspectives lies a profound paradox. How can we define nothing? By its very nature, nothing is the absence of anything to define. The moment we try to pin it down, we're no longer talking about nothing. Instead, we're talking about a concept, a quantum vacuum, a state of mind, all of which are, in their own ways, something. Then, there are the different ways in which nothing can be understood. Is it the absence of physical matter, or the absence of thought, of consciousness? Could it be the absence of time and space itself? Depending on the lens through which we view it, nothing can take on a multitude of forms. It can be a philosophical enigma, a scientific anomaly, a psychological state. In this sense, nothing is not a static concept but a dynamic one. It's not a singular entity but a spectrum of possibilities. It's not an absolute but a relative. And it's in this relativity, this ambiguity, this mystery that nothing becomes real. So is nothing real? Well, it depends on how you define real. If real means tangible, then perhaps not. But if real means significant, impactful, worthy of contemplation, then nothing is as real as it gets. 
In the end, nothing might just be the most intriguing something we have yet to fully understand.